Hi. <laughs> Been down to start a video like that. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit now about feeder choice, in particular for commercial fishing. The last few winters I've been doing a lot of commercial silverfish style fishing on a feeder and learnt a lot about what feeders to use, when and why. And what's really surprised me and the thing that I've learnt most about is changing your feeder is a bit like changing a rig on a pole or changing how you feed on a pole it has so much influence on how fish feed in your peg so a few of the feeders that i've been using recently first two are actually for baiting up i always like a couple of different sizes of feeder for introducing bait either at the start or during a session and the way i like to think of it is a bit like pole fishing you might want to feed a bit of a bigger ball a bit of a harder impact with more bait either early in the session to set up your peg or later in the session if you're a bit behind give it a big impact draw some fish in and the two feeders that i use for that are the large bait up or the large original exchange i find they're a nice two sizes um, that's roughly half the size of that one so i've got a bit of variety to play around with one thing i did want to tell you a little bit about especially on old commercial venues like allcroft where we are today is the bottom is incredibly silty. And I'm sure that if you fish with too heavy a feeder, or in particular bait up with too heavy a feeder, the bait will actually go into the sill on the bottom. Your feeder will go down, sink into the sill, and you'll be releasing your bait right in there on the bottom in a horrible tight area. Now, what I've started doing with the exchange when I'm actually baiting up on this kind of venue is taking the weight off. You haven't got to cast very far at all. Um, often here it's sort of 15 to 25 meters and you can still cast these full of bait no problem at all but the beauty of taking the weight off is they sink super slow and you can actually empty the feeder by jerking the rod at whatever level you want and something that's been really effective for me this year is casting in with no weight on and emptying that bait just under the surface so it puffs out of the feeder and it'll all settle on top of the silt so you get a very different bait presentation to what a lot of anglers fishing a feeder would so two bait up feeders two different sizes very important and just be aware you don't always need to feed with the weight on them the next feeder the most popular by far is my little 15 gram slimline this is the little two old one and for me that's what i call my busy feeder where i'm in and out regular creating activity in the peg releasing the bait quickly and catching a lot of fish and if the wind does get up the nice thing about the exchange is you can clip the 15 gram off and put a heavier weight on even if you wanted to go a little bit further as well um, that's the busy feeder use that for 75 percent of the fishing the next two are a window feeder and i generally use the smallest one the extra small for most of my commercial side of things and the nice thing about a window feeder is it releases your bait in a tiny little tight area so you might ask why would you want to do that now often with fish like skimmers and silverfish in particular if you have bait coming out on the way down casting regular with your cage the fish can start to rise up off the bottom and spread out in your peg and clipping a little window feeder on allows you to focus that bait on the bottom a little bit more so if you're getting liners or you feel like this fish in your peg that you're not catching indications missing an odd bite clipping a window on or just focus them on the bottom a little bit more there's two different options there's a caged window which will give off a little bit of feed and a solid window and normally i use the solid because if i put this feeder on i want to refocus them on the bottom so not as much attraction with this feeder but brilliant if you're getting lots of indications and you want to focus them back down on the bottom and the final one this is a little bit of an ace up my sleeve it's a little homemade version a 10 gram rocket and that for me comes into play on rock hard days when i'm fishing for just a few fish and the nice thing about this is it makes the tiniest little plop when it goes in and often later in the session fish are getting wary you've been boshing your feeder in all day long if you just want to keep things a little bit quieter slipping on a little tiny rocket like that with just a little bit of bait in it will just nick you a few extra fish and one final trick for you is when i put this on oh that made a nice little plop didn't it when i put this one on 
I often take another two or three feet of line off my reel and clip up just on the back edge of the bait. So after you've hammered them, caught a few fish, they start to wise up to it, slip the little rocket on, just past the feed area. It's a great little trick for catching in particular bream and skimmers. That's it gang, four or five different feeders, four or five totally different kinds of presentation, but they've all got the time and place. You can't beat a big old snotter in the afternoon like that, can you? Lovely day on the old waggler and feeder at Allcroft. She's a beauty. Bit cold for my liking. Don't forget though, folks, if you like what you've seen and you want a little bit more information and more importantly, you want to get a notification every time we put a new video up, hit the subscribe button. You'll get a little message. Not going to miss out.